and return to space-time, and you have now time-traveled. And it's not just the future. You can actually travel into the past. If you're traveling in the direction that the Earth is rotating, and you travel ahead of where the Earth was rotating when you left, you're going to end up in the future. Because you now reemerge in space-time ahead of where the Earth was on its timeline when you left. If you travel west, that's into the past. East is the future, west is the past. And again, it's going to sound ridiculous, and for those who are uneducated, they'll blast me on the Internet and say that I'm full of it. But the fact of the matter is, this is very much provable stuff. I've had people write me and say that the science in 2012 Enigma is, is ridiculous. Well, go to reciprocalsystem.com, read Dewey Larson's books, because there's several of them, and find out for yourself how he breaks down every single problem in quantum mechanics and shows you've got to have three-dimensional time. So all we're saying is, if you can get over into time space, it's going to look like everything does here because every atom and molecule around me right now is here because it's exchanging with time space. So there's time space stuff in every place around me. That means all this stuff exists as a parallel structure in a parallel universe. And when you go over there, it becomes your three dimensions of space. It's going to look the same because the energy of it is the same energy that's here in space-time. Now, here's where it gets really confusing, if it's not already confusing. <laughs> See, my mind, I just, I don't have to worry about this stuff. It comes in very naturally. You actually have an energetic pair to your physical body, which is in time-space, okay? But there are all these bonuses that your energy body has in time-space that your physical body doesn't have here. What I'm literally telling you is that every nook and cranny, every little funny fold of your brain exists as a parallel energetic structure that is coupled with the cells in your brain that interfaces with the cells in your brain, that interfaces with every molecule of DNA in your body. And that is where all thought processes are actually occurring. They're not occurring in your nervous system at all in terms of intellect. The body does produce certain forms of thought. You have an autonomic nervous system. You have a cerebellum that keeps you from falling over. It makes sure that you're balanced by working with the fluid in the chamber of your ear, the cochlea. You have all of the basic systems that are going to make sure that your heart is beating, that your lungs are breathing, that your eyes are not taking in all the information peripherally so that you can focus on what you're looking at. You have a screening mechanism that's going to screen out background noise so that if there's a television on and somebody's talking to you, you're going to listen to them talking and not hear the television. You're not going to hear all the input and weigh it the same. Those types of things are biologically driven systems. The body makes those thoughts for you. But all of the actual intellect, all of the actual thinking that you're going to be doing in your mind is not in the body at all. You have a parallel body, a parallel brain, a parallel nervous system that is an energetic nervous system. But it doesn't look like your physical body because your physical body doesn't have billions and billions of strings coming out of it. It doesn't have an instantaneous energetic connection that you can visibly see to everything else in its environment. What I'm asking you to visualize as strings is actually simply an energy field. And in time-space, you are part of that energy field, and your mind is not simply that which is created within your own energy field. It very much is affected <clears throat> by all these other things that are around you, including the thoughts of other people. The very fascinating case of Norman Mailer, famous novelist who wrote a novel called Barbary Shore. In this novel, he starts out writing about one main character and gradually changes the novel to write about a Russian spy. The Russian spy becomes the focus of the entire novel. He goes into great detail. Within the same week that he finishes Barbary Shore, a Russian spy was arrested in his same building that he was living in, just up the stairs and down the hallway. 
Now, does this mean that there was a conduit that was going through the air vent so that he could hear what this guy was saying? Of course not. What it does mean, though, is that that man was so emotionally charged because he was on the edge of his rope and he knew he was going to get caught that his mind was sending out signals. And Norman Mailer's mind is an energetic phenomenon which is sensitive to its environment and picked up the signals that were being generated. Now again, I talked about the experiment where buckyballs are shot through a 100 nanometer grate, a little tiny slit. They turn into a wave just by hitting the grate. It's like it makes them flip inside out and go from space-time, where they're a particle, into time-space. That solid particle, which has 120 atoms in it, it's not just like some tiny little thing. It's a ball. It's got structure. It's got form. It's got shape. It literally popped out of our space-time entirely. It flipped over into a realm where time is three-dimensional, space is one-dimensional, and it smears out. It's partly in the past, it's partly in the present, it's partly in the future. And in that state, it looks like a wave because you can't measure where everything is anymore. So now get a load of this. The DNA molecule is only slightly wider than a buckyball, which means the DNA molecule is also subject to quantum effects in which the molecules within your DNA are phasing between being here in space-time and being in time-space where they actually are stretched out through linear time. And they're sensitive to all the other energy fields around them. Now again, this is science. All we're doing is we're starting with Einstein's relativity. We're saying that as you move through space, you move through time. The faster you move through space, the faster you're traveling through time. In time-space, you can move not just into the future, but into the past as well, depending on what direction you're traveling. The Russians have identified the time field, which means that if you speed up the time field in a small area, time will run faster or slower in that area compared to everything else around it. And they've got lots of experiments with little wristwatches and stuff where they put them in the time field, and the time field makes it speed up or slow down. Now, pyramids are one of those things that will make those watches change speed. So a pyramid is an actual symbol of something that will cause change to occur. The pyramid is a symbol, but it's also a technology. It's also a machine. The symbol of the pyramid is that which is reaching up. It's something that's reaching for the heavens. It represents geometry, and there is geometry that makes this energy field of the time field I'm talking about function. It's all based on geometry, which is more complex than we're going to do in this presentation. But the time field is something which not only affects the passage of linear time, it also affects the health of your body. The more of this time field is flowing through your body, the healthier you're going to be. And paradoxically, the slower you're going to age. It's when the flow of the time field stops that you move out of eternity, that you move out of timelessness, it's when time stops flowing through you that you stop being an eternal being and you begin aging. Remember that scientific study that Deepak Chopra talked about in Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, where he gets a bunch of elderly people and he puts them in a room where it has the magazines of 40 years ago, it has the radio broadcasts, it has all the furniture, all the everything. What he found was that within a very short period of time, all these people had a remarkable turnaround where they started reverse aging. They actually started getting younger in a way that is molecularly, biologically provable. That's because the time field started flowing again. They started to have hope. The time field is that which gives you inspiration. If you want to know...